All right, hey everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the relationship that exists today between our sex hormones and the connection that those sex hormones have to your thyroid gland. Uh, one of the most biggest misconceptions, biggest problems that I see with people that have uh, thyroid problems is that many men, many men and women will come to our office and uh, their doctor that they may be seeing for their thyroid disorder only ever looks at their thyroid gland and they never look at all the possible relationships that exist uh, that could be causing their thyroid to dysfunction or in terms of causing a lot of those different low thyroid symptoms. And so again, today I want to shed some light just on the relationship that sex hormones have uh, to our thyroid gland, because it's a very, very intimate relationship, believe it or not, uh, between our sex hormones and the thyroid. And so when I talk about sex hormones, really what I'm talking about, uh, this applies to both men and women, because both men and women will make estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. And when I talk about estrogens, there are many different kinds of estrogen, but the three most common and, and kind of more important ones that, that need to be understood is E1, E2, and E3. And uh, basically our estrogens and testosterone and progesterone can all be affecting our thyroid. One of the more common conditions that we see in our office that's often missed is a condition called estrogen dominance. And this is a, a condition, like I said, it's missed in many, many men and women uh, who suffer with thyroid disease. And so this sex hormone imbalance, this estrogen dominance, often contributes to either your thyroid disorder or something we've talked about in past videos uh, called adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency. So if you look at the relationship, uh, basically when you're working with someone who has a thyroid problem, not only do you have to look at the thyroid, but you also have to look at the relationship with the adrenal glands, and you also have to look at the relationship of these sex hormones that you see here. That again, it will be your male and your female hormones. Very, very important. So today, again, I wanna talk to you about estrogen dominance and, and how that plays um, a role with thyroid disorders. Now, estrogen dominance is so common that it's one of the major causes behind poor T4 to T3 conversion. And let me explain that to you a little bit here for just a moment. Your thyroid gland will make two major hormones. They'll be T4 and they'll be T3. Um, T4 is the inactive form of your thyroid hormone. Your body's gonna need to take T4 and it's gonna need to convert it to T3. T3 is really what excites the cell. It's what turns all the, 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 the energetics of the cell on. And um, it's this T3 that is so important. Many times uh, people will come to our office and the doctor that they've been seeing has never even tested or looked at T3. So it becomes almost impossible to, to know if that person has a problem of T4 to T3 conversion. Now the significance of T4 to T3 conversion is that there's many different hormonal imbalances that can cause that, right? We can have too many estrogens, uh, again that condition called estrogen dominance, we could have uh, problems with our testosterone levels or low progesterone levels. So again, this is the significance or the link behind those hormones and how hormones can affect our thyroid. But again, it has to do with the conversion, T4 to T3 to conversion. Now, it's estimated that one in 10 women have thyroid disorders. And for many women who are diagnosed with thyroid disease, very few of them will go on to ever feeling good again. And then maybe that's you, okay? But if that's you, and, and, and what we're talking about is if you're taking your thyroid medication, you're not feeling all that much better, this could be another key component as to why you feel the way that you do. Um, if you miss the diagnosis of estrogen dominance, that's gonna explain a whole lot of problems as it relates to the thyroid. So what is estrogen dominance? Well, when we talk about estrogen dominance, estrogen dominance is a diagnosis that refers to an imbalance between uh, high levels of estrogen in relationship to progesterone. And that's really the key. It's the relationship to progesterone, okay? I want you to remember that. It's an extremely common problem in young girls who suffer with PMS. It's extremely common in women who have been put on oral contraceptives or the birth control pill. Uh, maybe you're a woman and you've been put on the pill to really just help regulate your cycle. And maybe you don't feel that much better taking the pill, but even if you're taking the pill, what I wanna tell you is that taking the pill will cause more dysregulation into your cycle down the road, okay? So very, very important for you to work with a doctor who really understands hormones from a holistic, natural perspective. Um, estrogen dominance is also a very common problem with women who have taken fertility shots. I see this as a common problem in our office. Um, I see it a very, very common with women who, um, who don't want a period and so they take a patch. 
And so they're exposing their body to this continuous source of estrogens. They're never ovulating. They're never making progesterone. And their body becomes deep, deeper and deeper and deeper into this rut of estrogen dominance. Okay? So again, the patch can cause that. Now, uh, estrogen dominance affects women during the years of menopause. It affects women during the years of perimenopause, where your estrogen levels begin to decline, but your progesterone levels uh, will actually even take even a sharper drop. So again, your estrogen levels are dropping, but again, it's the relationship of estrogen to progesterone that's really the most important. And so again, during menopause, your estrogen levels drop, but your progesterone levels drop even further, and it's that drop, that, that, drop, that further drop, that still keeps you in the state of estrogen dominance, okay? So a woman in menopause or perimenopause can still be estrogen dominance. We talked a little bit about this. Again, it's the, uh, it's the relationship or the ratio of estrogen to progesterone. So even though a woman may be low in estrogen, okay, um, the ratio of estrogen to progesterone is still favoring estrogen. So again, it's, it comes back down to, to progesterone. Now, estrogen dominance can be a very, very serious condition. It not only will affect, obviously, thyroid conversion, but the bigger problem with estrogen and elevated levels of estrogen is that elevated levels of estrogen we know cause cancer. And so that's why we see this connection. We're seeing more and more women uh, in their 40s and 50s and 60s developing breast cancer after being on years and years of antibiotics, having you know, some sort of uh, synthetic uh, hormone placed into their system. So again, you know, uh, this elevated level of estrogen not only affects the thyroid, it causes cancer. And this is why it's so critical to detect and monitor a woman's hormones throughout her life. Okay? Again, one in eight women will go on to develop breast cancer. It's a serious problem. And again, this is why it's important that when you choose a doctor, you're choosing a doctor to look at the big picture. Okay? Um, that means the doctor that you, that you work with really should be looking at things that relate to your immune system. They should obviously be working with you with your diet. They should be looking at the, the functioning of your adrenal glands. They should be looking at digestive function. They should be looking at the vitamin deficiencies in your body, right? You can't uh, have healthy tissue if we're deficient in all sorts of vitamins. Um, toxicity issues. You want to work with a doctor who's going to evaluate and properly look at liver function, uh, food sensitivities, and of course, neurological imbalances. So the point, the point being here is that thyroid disorders are very complex. And like most people, if you're taking thyroid replacement hormone, you're not feeling all that much better. And again, the reason why you're not feeling all that much better is because the doctor that you might be working with is only looking at one of these little facets of your thyroid, or of your health for that matter. So don't test these areas. If, or I should say, if you don't test these areas, you're never going to understand what's wrong, and it really becomes a guessing game. I had a lady, a young lady, come into our office not that long ago, and um, she has two little, little, little uh, kids at home, and she went to go see a doctor, and the doctor never even tested her hormones, and basically just put her on some progesterone cream, put her on a couple different, uh, put her on basically a hormone cocktail, never tested her hormones, and now it's been about 60 days since she's had a menstrual cycle, and she's feeling that much worse. And so again, if you don't test these things properly, it becomes a guessing game, and you can make somebody very, very sick when you guess about their health. So simply prescribing sleeping pills, anti-anxiety pills, blood pressure pills, cholesterol pills, beta blockers, antidepressants, all in the name of treating symptoms, inevitably is going to make you worse. Uh, taking thyroid replacement will not correct your estrogen dominance, and that's so very important to understand. A lot of women think, well, if I could just take the right amount of thyroid medication, I'll start feeling better, and that'll clear everything else up. And that's unfortunately really not how your body works. Taking thyroid medications may increase your T4, but it's not going to fix all these other problems uh, and causes that are, that are relating to your poor health. Number one, uh, when it comes to, to, again, choosing a doctor, choose a doctor who has the experience in evaluating you for estrogen dominance, okay? This is a very common problem, but unfortunately many doctors don't really know what to do about estrogen dominance. So again, choose a doctor who is familiar in working with women who have estrogen dominance, and one, obviously, who's going to test you, but also work with a doctor who's going to look at the big picture. And those are some of the things that we talked about uh, earlier. So just a quick couple closing points I want you to remember. 
Number one is that estrogen dominance affects men and women, okay? That is something that I think uh, all too often we tend to think of estrogen dominance just being a problem relating to women, but it definitely affects men. I see it a lot of, a lot of times in men, and we call that andropause, okay? Number two is that estrogen dominance will affect your thyroid, and it will cause low thyroid symptoms. So that's point number two. Point number three is that estrogen dominance increases your cancer risk, okay? That's very important. But also, estrogen dominance will also affect things like brain function, immune function, bone health, cardiovascular health, and so much more. Number four is that the symptoms of adrenal gland imbalance or adrenal burnout, a thyroid disorder, and sex hormone imbalances are all very, very similar. And so this is why you have to test and you don't guess, okay? Very important. Number five, to test for estrogen dominance, you need to have special testing and you need to have all of your hormones evaluated, okay? That's very, very important. So this, again, uh, involves getting tested for estro, uh, um, E1, estrone, estradiol, which is E2, um, and estriol, which is E3. So very, very important for you women out there. Number six, and this is really the most important, if you don't have the proper testing, your doctor will most likely miss the diagnosis of estrogen dominance, they'll miss the diagnosis of adrenal burnout, and you'll miss what pattern of thyroid dysfunction that you have. Very, very, very important. Well, I want you to know that with proper testing, with lifestyle changes, and just a commitment to better health, there's no doubt that you can get better. There's no doubt that you can reclaim your health. You can overcome a lot of those different symptoms that are just holding you down in life. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Uh, check out our website, www.drhagmeyer.com. Just a lot of great information on there about thyroid problems, a lot of great information on there about hormone optimization, a lot of great information on there about adrenal problems, and um, a lot of information about functional medicine and how functional medicine can really be the, the approach that you need in order to get better. Well, take care. Hope you enjoyed our video. And if you did enjoy it, please share it with someone that is also suffering with chronic health problems. Take care.